today let's study pancreas under the following headings introduction location parts surfaces and borders relations development and duct system blood supply venous drainage lymphatic drainage now supply functions and applied importance coming to the introduction of pancreas pancreas is a j shaped organ okay it is a j shaped organ it is lobulated and elongated organ it is a lobulated and elongated organ it is both exocrine and endocrine in function it has got both exocrine part and the endocrine part okay so it is both exocrine and endocrine in function okay it is very soft this organ is very soft and it is completely retroperitoneal and it is completely retroperitoneal it is covered by the peritoneum entirely and it is present in the posterior abdominal close to the posterior abdominal wall okay next coming to the location this pancreas is situated at the level of vertebrae l1 and l2 if you see these two are the vertebrae l1 and l2 so this pancreas is pancreas is located against the vertebrae l1 and l2 okay pancreas is located against the vertebrae l1 and l2 next coming to the parts of the pancreas okay pancreas has got the following parts this is the head of the pancreas okay this is the head of the pancreas this is a downward projection from the head you can see this is actually a j shaped end okay the downward projection from the head which is called as uncinate process which is called as uncinate process okay next what we have is actually the neck of the pancreas this narrow part which is connecting the head to the body okay this is the head this is a body this narrow part which is connecting the head to that of the body is called the neck of the pancreas this is actually the neck of the pancreas and what you are seeing here this is actually the body of the pancreas this is a body and this terminal end is called the tail of the pancreas this terminal end is called the tail of the pancreas so these are all the parts of pancreas next let's talk about the surfaces and borders next let's talk about the surfaces and borders if you see only the head this much is the head okay if you see only the head it has got a superior border okay this is the right side and this is the left side okay this is the left side so this is the superior border this is the right border and this is the inferior border superior border right border and inferior border okay so three borders then we have two surfaces this is the anterior surface which is facing the front and what do you seeing behind what do you see behind will be the posterior surface will be the posterior surface okay if you see the neck it has got two surfaces an anterior surface and a posterior surface the borders are very very small you can see this is actually the superior border and inferior border which is not very uh, it's actually a very small border so we consider only the two surfaces the anterior surface and the posterior surface next coming to the body if you see body if you take a cross section of the body it is somewhat triangular in shape okay somewhat triangular in shape so uh, since it is triangular in shape it will have three surfaces and three borders okay so what you see here this is actually the superior border superior border this green thing which is attached here this is actually the anterior border this anterior border is actually related to the attached part of the transverse mesocolon we can see this anterior border is related to the attached part of the transverse mesocolon this one is the anterior border okay in the front and this is called the inferior border superior anterior and inferior okay so that's why it is triangular so what you see here this is actually the anterior surface this is actually the anterior surface this one is the inferior surface which is facing downwards okay you can see this is actually the inferior surface this is actually the anterior surface and behind that we have the posterior surface so three surfaces and three borders okay it has got three surfaces and three borders at last is the tail tail is a tapering end which will be related to the hilum of the spleen okay so this is about the parts surfaces and borders of the pancreas next coming to the relations to understand the relations let us consider few structures in the posterior abdominal wall okay so what we are seeing these two are the lumbar vertebrae l1 and l2 this is l1 and this is the second one is a l2 vertebrae 
okay as we know the pancreas is lo related to the is located at the level of l1 and l2 vertebrae okay next over these structures the diaphragm is located okay this is just a part of the diaphragm with the two crests okay this is the right crest of the diaphragm and this is the left crest of the diaphragm you know the right crest of the diaphragm will be extending up to l1 l2 and l3 vertebrae up to the level of l3 vertebrae and attached to the l3 vertebrae if you see the left crest it is shorter when compared to that of the right crest and it will be extending only up to l2 vertebrae okay then the next structure what we need to know is these two blood vessels okay in the posterior abdominal wall this is the aorta which is present along the left side you can see this is actually the aorta which will be entering through the diaphragm through the aortic opening into the abdomen and this is present along the left side and this inferior vena cava is present to the right of the abdominal aorta you can see this inferior vena cava is located to the right of the abdominal aorta this blue color represents the inferior vena cava and this orange color represents the aorta now we have to see few branches which are coming from the abdominal aorta aorta which will be coming as a relation of pancreas now what you are seeing here this is actually the first anterior branch of the abdominal aorta okay this is the first anterior branch it's a very short branch this is the celiac trunk this celiac trunk divides into three branches as we see towards the left we have two branch okay one is the left gastric artery other one is splenic artery which is a tortuous artery which is going to supply the spleen okay then the branch which is coming towards the right is actually the common hepatic artery this common hepatic artery will divide into the proper hepatic artery which will go to supply the liver and this is actually the gastroduodenal artery okay which is going to supply the stomach and the duodenum okay so that's why it's called gastroduodenal artery this gastroduodenal artery will divide into the right gastroepiploic artery which will be supplying the greater curvature of the stomach right side of the greater curvature of the stomach so it is called right gastroepiploic artery and it will be continuing down one more branch will be continuing down as a superior pancreatic or duodenal artery so it's going to supply the upper part of the pancreas head of the pancreas and also the duodenum that's why it's called superior pancreatic or duodenal artery so these are the branches we need to know about the celiac trunk then the next important branch next important anterior division anterior branch of the abdominal aorta which will be given at the level of l1 is this one this is actually the superior mesenteric artery we can see this is actually the superior mesenteric artery we can see it is going anteriorly it is going in anteriorly downwards and towards the see towards the right okay towards the right it is going like this okay when it is going like this it will give one important branch which will be going to supply the inferior part of the duodenum that is the last few parts of the duodenum and also the inferior part of the head of the pancreas okay so it is called inferior pancreatic duodenal artery so this is the superior pancreatic duodenal artery and this is the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery these two arteries will be anastomosing around the head of the pancreas that we will see now as relations okay the next important structure what we need to know is the portal vein and its formation you can see this is actually the portal vein okay now we'll see how it is located and related to these structures which are present here this is how the portal vein is related to these structures we can see in front of the vena cava inferior vena cava we can see this is actually the portal vein okay this violet color structure is the portal vein and this portal vein is formed by the union of can see this tortuous vein this is actually the splenic vein which will be carrying the venous blood from the spleen and this splenic vein will be joined by the inferior mesenteric vein that we are not showing it here this splenic vein joins with the superior mesenteric vein you can see this is actually the superior mesenteric artery and this vein is accompanied to that of the superior mesenteric artery this is called the superior mesenteric vein okay this superior mesenteric vein joins with the splenic vein behind the neck of the pancreas to form the portal vein to form the portal vein we can also see this gastroduodenal artery is located over the is actually related superficial or anterior to that of the portal vein okay so this is the relation with that of the portal vein now we'll compare all these structures with that of the pancreas okay
and will relate all the structures with that of the pancreas. Now the pancreas is located over all the structures we have shown so far. Okay. Now we can see this is actually the head of the pancreas, the neck, the body and the tail of the pancreas. Now we will see the relations of the head. We will see the relations of the head. If you see the head, as we know, head is having the superior border, the right border and also the inferior border. You can see the superior border, the superior border is related to the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. You can see it is related to the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. The inferior border is related to inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. You can see superior pancreatic duodenal artery is coming from the gastro duodenal artery. You can see this is a gastro duodenal artery. Okay. So superior border is related to superior pancreatic duodenal artery and inferior border is related to inferior pancreatic duodenal artery. And if you see the right border, we can see the anastomosis between the superior and the inferior pancreatic duodenal arteries. Okay. Other than these, the terminal part of the bile duct, bile duct, you can see this end, the green end, what you are seeing here is actually the bile duct which will be coming from the liver. Okay. The terminal part of the bile duct is also related to the right border. Okay. Right border. Next, we have to see this organ which is related to the head of the pancreas. We can see this is the stomach. This is the pyloric part of the stomach. First part of duodenum the second part of the duodenum, the third part of the duodenum and this is the fourth ascending part, the fourth part of the duodenum followed by the duodeno-jejunal flexure and this is the jejunum. Okay, so we can see superior border is also overlapped by the first part of duodenum. Superior border is overlapped by the first part of duodenum. Then the right border is related to the second part of duodenum. The, the inferior border is actually related to the third part of the duodenum. Inferior border is related to the third part of the duodenum. So these are all the relations of the borders. Okay. Now let's summarize the relations of the border of the head. Okay. Borders of the head of the pancreas. The superior border is related to the superior pancreatic duodenal artery. Okay. The right border is related to the anastomosis between the superior pancreatic duodenal artery, inferior pancreatic duodenal artery and also the terminal part of the bile duct, okay, the terminal part of the bile duct and also the second part of the duodenum and also the second part of duodenum. If you see the inferior border, it is related to the third part of the duodenum, okay. So this is about the relation of the border. Now we will see the relations of the surface of the anterior surface of the head of the pancreas. You see the anterior surface, the upper part is related to the first part of duodenum. Okay, upper part is overlapped by first part of duodenum which you have seen already. Then the middle area is actually crossed by the transverse colon. You can see it is crossed by the transverse colon. Anteriorly it is related to transverse colon. And the lower part is related to the coils of jejunum. You can see the coils of jejunum is related to the lower part. This is about the anterior relation of the head. If you see the uncinate process, okay, we are removing this so that we can see clearly the uncinate process. This is actually the uncinate process. If you see the uncinate process, we can see these vessels are emerging and overlapping the uncinate process. You can see this is the uncinate process and these vessels are overlapping the uncinate. What are these two vessels? These are the superior mesenteric vessels. Okay, the superior mesenteric vein and the superior mesenteric artery. Okay, so that will be overlapping the uncinate process. Okay, that will come as the anterior relation of uncinate process. All the posterior relation of the entire pancreas we will cover at the end. Okay, next we will see about the relation of the neck. If you see the neck, it is related to the pyloric end of the stomach. You can see this is the relation of the neck. It's related to the pyloric end of the stomach. You can see this is actually the pylorus of the stomach which will be related to the neck anteriorly. If you see, this pylorus is separated from the pancreas by means of lesser sac. The cavity behind the stomach is actually the lesser sac. So the lesser sac is also related anterior to that of the pancreas, to the neck of the pancreas. Next, coming to the body. 
of the pancreas we can see a small elevation which is present towards the right end of the body which is called the tuber omen tail okay the tuber omen tail is related superiorly okay superior to the tuber omen tail we have the celiac trunk okay celiac trunk is related superior to the tuber omen tail and we can see the common hepatic artery which will be related to the right of the tuber omen tail to the related to the right of the tuber omen tail and the splenic artery which will be related to the left of the tuber omen tail splenic artery will be related to the left of the tuber omen tail so these are all the relations of the superior border of the pancreas superior border of the pancreas so we have two more borders that is the intermediate border or the anterior border this is actually the anterior border and inferior border if you see the anterior border which has the attached part of the which has the attached part of the root of the transverse mesocolon okay which has the attached part of the root of the transverse mesocolon okay now if you see the inferior border if you see the inferior border it is related to this in, uh, in uh, superior mesenteric artery along its right end along its right end it is related to superior mesenteric artery coming to the relations of the surfaces if you see the body this is actually the this is actually the anterior surface of the pancreas the anterior surface of the pancreas is related to the stomach is related to the lower part of the stomach and this anterior surface is separated from the stomach by means of the cavity which is present between these two called the lesser sac so anteriorly it is related to the lesser sac and the stomach okay next coming to the inferior surface okay next coming to the inferior surface this inferior surface is related to the duodeno jejunal flexure you can see it is related to duodeno jejunal flexure and also the coils of jejunum and also the coils of jejunum that is about the inferior surface relation of the body okay next the one surface which is left is the posterior surface we'll cover at the end okay along with the posterior surface of body and the tail now the last part of the pancreas is the tail of the pancreas to study the tail of the pancreas we'll relate it to one more organ that is actually the spleen what you're seeing is actually the spleen it is related to the hilum of the spleen the tail of the pancreas is related to the hilum of the spleen and it is located inside a ligament called the leno renal ligament is located inside the leno renal ligament so this is about the tail of the pancreas now we'll study about the posterior relation of the pancreas okay we'll study about the posterior relation of pancreas to study about the posterior relation of pancreas first we'll remove all these structures and we'll include the kidney and the supra renal glands posterior to the pancreas okay we'll include kidney and supra renal glands posterior to the pancreas now we included the right kidney and the right suprarenal gland and the left kidney and the left suprarenal gland okay now we'll see the relation posterior relation of the pancreas we can see the posterior part posterior surface of the head first we'll see the posterior surface of the head this posterior surface of the head is related to we can see this is actually the right crest of diaphragm you can see this is the diaphragm this crest is coming posteriorly right crest of the diaphragm the inferior vena cava okay inferior vena cava and we can see the draining of two renal veins you can see this the two renal veins which are draining into the inferior vena cava you can see the two renal veins which are draining into the inferior vena cava so these are all the relations of the posterior relation of the head of the pancreas if you open up the pancreas if you open up the pancreas we can see the head is related to this bile duct you can see the bile duct is embedded inside the head of the pancreas you can see the bile duct is embedded inside the head of the pancreas okay which will join with the pancreatic main pancreatic duct to form hepatopancreatic duct okay which will open into the major duodenal papillae which will open into the major duodenal papillae that is about the posterior relations of the head and also the bile duct relation to the head of the pancreas next we have to talk about the uncinate process if you see posteriorly uncinate process is related to if you remove if you remove these vessels 
okay you can see the posterior part of the uh, the posterior surface of the sunsinate process is related to the iota you can see this is actually the iota posterior surface is related to iota so that is about the relations of the head and the unsinate process next we need to know about the neck this is the neck region you see neck posteriorly the neck is related to this vein that is a portal vein okay so the formation of portal vein is happening behind the neck of the pancreas so the posterior relation of neck is the formation of the portal vein we can see it clearly see the portal vein is formed by the union of the superior mesenteric and the splenic vein behind the neck of the pancreas you can see it's exactly located behind the neck of the pancreas that is about the posterior relation of the neck of the pancreas now coming to the body of the pancreas if you see the body of the pancreas just we lift up the body so that we can study the relation if you see the body this is the body of the pancreas if you see the body of pancreas it is related posteriorly to you can see these renal vessels okay so the renal vessels and we can see the splenic artery splenic vein okay it is related to the splenic vein the renal vessels the left kidney okay you can see the left kidney and also the left suprarenal gland you can see this the left suprarenal gland it is also related to the left suprarenal gland okay so these are all the posterior relations of and including the left crest of diaphragm you can see this left crest of the diaphragm which is related posterior to the posterior to the body of the pancreas that is about posterior relation of the body of pancreas so the again we'll summarize the posterior relation of body of pancreas it's related to the renal vessels related to the splenic vein related to the left kidney and left suprarenal gland and also the left crest of the diaphragm okay so it's placed like this okay okay next let us see the development of the pancreas to see the development of the pancreas we need to know about the gut tube this is actually the gut okay this is a midgut loop okay this is actually the midgut loop and uh, the midgut loop is suspended anteriorly by the anteriorly by the dor uh, ventral mesogastrium and posteriorly by the dorsal mesogastrium okay posteriorly it is attached to the posterior abdominal wall by means of dorsal mesogastrium and ventrally it is or the anteriorly it is attached by means of ventral mesogastrium okay and there are two structures two buds which will be developing initially from the midgut loop one on the dorsal aspect which is represented by this violet color this is actually the the person of a blue color this is actually the dorsal bud dorsal pancreatic bud and this yellow color represents the ventral pancreatic bud okay this represents the ventral pancreatic bud so it is this is the position in which it is placed in the abdominal cavity okay from the base of the ventral bud we have one more small bud which will be arising uh, into the ventral mesogastrium which is called the hepatic bud okay that is called the hepatic bud so after the midgut loop is formed it will fall onto the right side okay this is actually the this is actually the right side and this is the left side okay this midgut loop will fall towards the right side once it falls towards the right side whatever is present on the ventral aspect that is the ventral bud will be facing towards the right side and the dorsal pancreatic bud will be facing towards the left side now next because of the indifference of the growth of the walls of the duodenum what happens is this because of the indifference in the growth of the uh, walls of the duodenum this ventral pancreatic bud will lie will start coming towards the left side okay and it will form the lower part of the head and the unsinate process of pancreas okay and it will form the lower part of the head and the unsinate process of pancreas and this dorsal bud will expand and it will become the rest of the rest of the head neck body and the tail of the pancreas okay it will become the rest of the parts of the pancreas so this is how the pancreas is developed so the lower part of the head and the unsinate process is developed from the ventral pancreatic bud and the dorsal pancreatic bud will give rise to the upper part of the head the neck the body and the tail of the pancreas okay we can see the hepatic bud okay which will now the proximal the only the uh, uh, the distal end will dilate to form the liver and the proximal part will be remaining as the 
as the duct okay the bile duct now this development will help us to understand the duct system of the pancreas now we'll study about the duct system of pancreas okay if you see the if you see the duct the duct is more close to the posterior aspect of the pancreas after we remove the anterior part of the pancreas we can see the duct which is very close to the posterior aspect of the pancreas this duct is called the main pancreatic duct okay this duct is called the main pancreatic duct this main pancreatic duct is otherwise called the uh, pancreatic duct of birson birson okay the pancreatic duct of birson if you see this it is going through the pancreas to from the tail the body and the neck once it reaches the neck it turns downwards okay and it turns downwards to come to the medial aspect to come to the right right border of the head of the pancreas from there it will go into the substance of the duodenum where it joins with that of the where it joins with that of the bile duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct and opens into the summit of the major duodenal papillae and opens into the summit of the major duodenal papillae okay this major duodenal papillae will be located around 8 to 10 cm from the pyloric end of the stomach it will be located at around 8 to 10 cm from the pyloric end of the stomach if you see the main pancreatic duct it will receive many small tributaries okay it will look like a fish bone pattern if you see it looks like a fish bone pattern and hence it is called as herring bone pattern okay hence it is called as herring bone pattern okay if you see developmentally the main pancreatic duct mainly develops from this one what dorsal bud okay it will be developing from the dorsal bud okay the most of the part is developed from the dorsal bud but after this turn okay after this turn this area is developing from the ventral bud okay so it joins with the ventral bud to form the main pancreatic duct so the distal end the distal end after the neck it is formed from the ventral bud okay formed inside the ventral bud we'll see how after finishing the minor duodenal papillae the next duct what we need to know is this one the accessory pancreatic duct we can see this is actually the accessory pancreatic duct which will go over the main pancreatic duct you can see this is actually the continuation of the accessory pancreatic duct this accessory pancreatic duct is nothing but the terminal part of the duct which is developed from the dorsal bud if you see the dorsal bud it it has to go straight okay it has to go straight so the terminal part of the dorsal bud distal to that of the attached part of the ventral bud okay distal to the attached part of the ventral bud will become narrow okay will become narrow to form this accessory pancreatic duct it is called as accessory pancreatic duct of santorini okay santorini okay this will open into the minor duodenal papillae this will open into the minor duodenal papillae this minor duodenal papillae will be located around 2 cm proximal to that of the major duodenal papillae opening inside the duodenum okay both are opening into the second part of duodenum so if you see the duct system the main pancreatic duct is formed by two sources one from the dorsal bud till the neck and next from the ventral bud okay similarly if you see the accessory pancreatic duct this accessory pancreatic duct is formed by the the proximal part by the small portion of the ventral bud and the terminal part of the dorsal bud okay the terminal part of the dorsal bud which becomes narrow okay that is about the duct system of pancreas study about the blood supply of pancreas this is the head of the pancreas this is the ancillary process of pancreas this is the neck the body and the tail of the pancreas okay the pancreas now let's study about the blood supply to understand the blood supply we we'll let's see the this is the development okay developmentally it is from the junction of the foregut and midgut it is developmentally it is associated with the junction of the foregut and midgut that is at the second mid of the second part of the duodenum and hence it will receive blood supply from both the artery of foregut and also the artery of midgut okay it will also receive the blood supply from both the artery of foregut and the artery of midgut that we'll see now
So this is the celiac trunk which will be related near the neck of the pancreas, okay, near the starting of the uh, terminal part of the neck and the body of the pancreas. And this is splenic artery which is one of the branch which is going to supply the spleen, okay, this is a splenic artery. Next important branch which is going towards the right is the common hepatic artery. This common hepatic artery will divide into gastroduodenal artery and the proper hepatic artery. Okay, proper hepatic artery, gastroduodenal artery. This is actually the common hepatic artery and this is actually splenic artery. Okay. So these are the arteries we need to remember which are coming from celiac trunk, which is coming from celiac trunk, which is the artery of foregut, okay, artery of foregut, okay. Next, we need to know about the next source which is coming like this. This is actually the superior mesenteric artery, superior mesenteric artery, which is the artery of midgut, okay, which is the artery of midgut. From here, we have a branch which will be arising. It is called inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery, which is called the inferior. This is called inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. This inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery will divide into two branches one towards the anterior aspect, one towards the posterior aspect okay one travels posteriorly and one travels anteriorly okay one travels anteriorly okay similarly the gastroduodenal artery will give rise to the gastroduodenal will give rise to the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery this is actually the superior pancreatic or duodenal artery Okay, pancreatic or duodenal artery. This superior pancreatic or duodenal artery will again divide into an anterior branch and a so this is an anterior branch and a posterior branch. Okay, an anterior branch and a posterior branch. These anterior and the posterior branches will anastomose with the anterior and the posterior branches of inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery. Okay, this is the main blood supply to the head of the pancreas. If you see the head of the pancreas, it is receiving superior pancreatic or duodenal artery and the inferior pancreatic or duodenal artery branches. Okay, anterior and the posterior branches which will be anastomosing along the anterior and the posterior part of the head of the pancreas. That is about the blood supply of the head. Coming to the body and the tail, it is mainly supplied by the branches which are coming from the splenic artery. Okay, which are coming from the splenic artery. Okay. Out of these branches, one of the splenic artery branch is a very large branch, okay, which will be supplying most of the part of the body up to the neck, okay. This large branch of the splenic artery is called as Arteria Pancreatica Magna. Arteria Pancreatica, okay, Arteria Pancreatica Magna. Magna means large. Okay. That's why it is called Arteria Pancreatica Magna. Okay. And the branches which are supplying the tip, that is the tail, is called Arteria Corda Pancreatis. Okay. Arteria Corda. Corda means tail. Okay. Corda Pancreatis. Okay, arteria cauda pancreatis, which will be supplying the tail. So, this is about the blood supply. Again, we will summarize. Since the duodenum is developed from both the sources, foregut and midgut, so it is receiving arteries from both the celiac trunk and also the superior mesenteric, mesenteric artery. Okay, the celiac trunk, two branches we should remember right now. There is a common hepatic and the splenic artery. The common hepatic will divide into the proper hepatic and gastroduodenal. This gastroduodenal will give superior pancreatic duodenal, which will divide into an anterior branch and a posterior branch. Similarly, the inferior pancreatic, the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery will be arising from superior mesenteric artery. 
This will also divide into an anterior branch and posterior branch which will anastomose around the head of the pancreas and supplies the head of the pancreas. Next, the neck, body and the tail of the pancreas supplied by branches arising from the splenic artery. Okay, this is about the blood supply of the, uh, blood supply of the pancreas. Next, coming to the venous drainage, as we know the posterior to the pancreas, we have a tortuous vein which is running, that is actually the portal vein. Just imagine this is actually posterior to the pancreas, okay, this is actually the uh, splenic vein, not the portal vein, the splenic vein, okay, a torturous vein which will be draining the blood from the spleen, that is the splenic vein. This splenic vein will join with the superior mesenteric vein, you know, the superior mesenteric artery is accompanied by the superior mesenteric vein, okay, from here onwards it is posterior, okay, this much is retroperitoneal, uh, retropancreatic, okay, behind the pancreas, okay, so this is actually the splenic vein. Uh, this is actually the superior mesenteric vein, sorry, this is actually the superior mesenteric which is joined with the splenic vein to form the portal vein behind the neck of the pancreas. So, what you are seeing, this is actually the portal vein. This portal vein, splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein. So, the venous blood from the Pancreas will drain into the splenic, will drain into the superior mesenteric and also the portal veins. Okay, that is about the venous drainage of pancreas. Next, coming to the lymphatic drainage. To understand the lymphatic drainage, we need to know about three groups of lymph nodes. Okay, one is near the tail of the pancreas and it is associated with the spleen also, that is called the pancreatico splenic nodes. Okay, pancreatico splenic nodes. Okay, pancreatico splenic. Okay, next group of nodes which are associated with the inferior mesenteric vessels, associated with the inferior mesenteric, sorry, superior mesenteric vessel is called the superior mesenteric nodes. Okay, the superior mesenteric nodes. Superior mesenteric nodes okay the next group will be associated with the celiac trunk and it is called the celiac nodes it is called celiac nodes okay so these three groups of lymph nodes are the one which are going to drain the pancreas from uh, going to drain the lymphatic from the pancreas okay so these lymphatics from the tail and part of the body will drain into the pancreatic or splenic from the neck, the body and the upper part of the head will be draining into the celiac nodes and the uncinate process, the neck, the lower part of the body and also the head will be draining into the superior mesenteric nodes. All these lymphatics will be following the arteries, okay, will be following the arteries. Now coming to the nerve supply of the pancreas, it is supplied by both sympathetics and parasympathetics. The preganglionic fibers of the uh, sympathetics are arising from the lower thoracic, lower thoracic and upper lumbar, okay, upper lumbar spinal segments, okay. The parasympathetics are coming from vagus, okay, parasympathetics are coming from vagus. If you see the sympathetics, these sympathetic fibers will come through uh, celiac plexus, celiac plexus and through the splanchnic nerves, splanchnic nerves, okay. From here, it will go into the pancreas and it will be present in the, and through the uh, intra, and it will be supplying the intrapancreatic ganglia, okay. We supplying the intrapancreatic, intrapancreatic ganglias and also the islets, blood vessels and the ducts and the acinite, okay. It also supplies the islets, islets, uh, then it will supply the ducts, acinite and also the blood vessels, okay. So what is the effect of this? sympathetic fibers okay what it, what it does so it will reduce the insulin secretion or the islets so since it's applying the islets it is actually the actually reducing the insulin secretion 
in the blood vessels it will cause vasoconstriction usually in the ducts and acini it will not have much of effect okay it will not have much of effect the sympathetics the parasympathetic that is coming through the vagus okay will be mainly having opposite effect to that of the sympathetics mainly it will cause increased insulin secretion okay increase insulin secretion and also increase in exocrine secretions okay Insul increase in the exocrine part of the pancreas secretion also okay that is about the nerve supply so main thing what we have to remember sympathetic parasympathetic sympathetic is coming from lower thoracic upper lumbar parasympathetic coming through vagus vagus is helping to increase the insulin and increase the exocrine secretion the sympathetic is having an opposite function coming to the functions of the pancreas to understand the function of pancreas we should know the interior of pancreas okay the pancreatic tissue is mainly made up of many closely packed serous acini these serous acini are connected to this duct system okay these serous acini these small pits what you are seeing are all serous acini which are all connected to the duct system okay it should be connected to the duct system so these serous acini will contribute in the in the exocrine part of the pancreas will contribute in the exocrine part of the pancreas which will secrete which will secrete the digestive and digestive juices these digestive juices via the duct system it will be poured out into the second part of the duodenum okay along with the bile duct okay along with the bile duct okay next group of cells what we need to understand is these cells these collection of cells are called the islets of langerhans these islets of langerhans are more numerous along the tail of the pancreas it is also present here but it is more numerous along the tail of the pancreas these islets of langerhans will have alpha beta and delta cells okay will have alpha beta and delta cells the alpha cells will be secreting glucagon beta cells will be secreting insulin and delta cells will be secreting somatostatins okay which will be directly released into the blood stream which will be directly released into the blood stream via the blood vessels supplying the pancreas this is about the function of the pancreas okay next we will talk about the applied importance of pancreas the first important applied importance of pancreas is, uh, pancreas is pancreatitis there are major there are so many reasons for the pancreatitis like alcoholic pancreatitis obstructive pancreatitis when we talk about obstructive pancreatitis sometimes the gall stones the gall stones is the stones which are formed in formed inside the gall bladder can come and get blocked here along the pancreatic hepatopancreatic duct okay along the hepatopancreatic duct that is the ampulla of bladder when it gets blocked just imagine this is the stone which is blocking here when it blocks here what happens the bile juices which are the bile uh, juices which are coming here along the bile duct will come and it can't drain into the duodenum and hence what happens it will back flow it will have a back flow through this through this pancreatic duct it will enter into the pancreatic duct the when the pressure is increased here the duct which is guarded by a sphincter that is the pancreatic duct which is guarded with the sphincter may get uh, weakened so that the secretion so that the bile can enter inside the pancreatic duct which can cause infection which can cause inflammation of the pancreas known as the pancreatitis okay this obstruction can be caused because of spasm of the hepatopancreatic sphincter also if the stone is not there okay sometimes there can be spasm of the hepatopancreatic sphincter this also can cause the same problem there is a retrograde uh, there is a retrograde circulation of the bile into the pancreatic duct which can cause pancreatitis so that is about the pancreatitis because of gall stone and because of spasm of hepatopancreatic sphincter the next applied importance is accessory pancreatic tissues these accessory pancreatic tissues can be present inside the parts of digestion like stomach the duodenum okay and also in jejunum uh, jejunum is very uncommon it can be in ileum ileum and ileal diverticulum okay it can be in the ileum and ileal diverticulum also so the most common sites of uh, ectopic 
pancreatic tissue or accessory pancreatic tissue is in stomach and duodenum okay this also will contain islet cells which will be producing insulin and glucagon okay which will also have islet cells which can produce insulin and glucagon the next applied importance what we need to know is the cancer of the head of the pancreas whenever there is a cancer of head of pancreas the growth of the pancreatic tissue here can cause obstruction to this bile duct can cause obstruction to the bile duct and hence the patient can present with the symptoms of obstructive jaundice okay hence patient can present with symptoms of obstructive jaundice because the bile can't flow into the duodenum it gets accumulated here and the patient can present into present uh, symptoms of obstructive jaundice and also when there is a overgrowth of the pancreatic tissue here it can cause obstruction to the duodenum okay which will uh, result in vomiting okay symptoms like vomiting that is about obstruction of the structures associated with pancreas due to pancreatic carcinoma then the next applied importance is related to the development as we said the uh, two buds the ventral pancreatic bud and the dorsal pancreatic together will form the pancreas because of the uh, because of the uh, difference in the growth of the duodenal wall okay during this development sometimes the pancreatic tissue can be present throughout the circumference of the duodenum okay it can encircle the entire duodenum and this also can cause some pressure symptoms over the duodenum which can cause duodenal obstruction and this condition is called annular pancreas okay this pancreas is encircling the entire duodenum okay the second part of the duodenum hence it is called annular pancreas then the last one is associated with the surgeries of pancreas usually in case of chronic pancreatitis okay chronic pancreatitis the pancreas will be removed uh, while removing the pancreas they leave only the small portion which are which is close to the duodenum to avoid injury to the bile duct and they'll remove the entire pancreas okay this is called this surgery is called pancreatectomies okay this this surgery is called the pancreatectomy which is done for chronic pancreatitis chronic pancreatitis so these are the points about pancreas thank you